All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about what's responsible for the initial hand path in the downswing. All right, Sean, Leo Tong sent us a great question. He wants to know what's responsible for the initial downswing hand path. Is it just moving the hands in one direction or is it the body motion? Okay, so I'm assuming it just means that initial kind of first few inches of the Probably the, hand the path. overall hand path of the downswing. We'll, we'll go with that. Okay, okay. So I put a PJ Tour golfer here at the top of the swing. I, I'm using the, the lead arm adduction angle to show how far across the chest the arm is swung at the top. And I also put in the hand path that shows the backswing hand path and the downswing hand path. So to, to answer the question, just by kind of studying the data that's produced by the gears avatars, the left arm swings across the chest. At the top of the swing, this golfer is at 60 degrees, let's say, and, okay. and this is 90. The initial downswing, the, the chest is turning, so that actually pins the left arm a little bit more, and, and most of the golfers we looked at actually do pin it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the very initial downswing hand path would be caused by some shift, Right, the, 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 the shift of the upper and lower of the centers, let's say the center of the torso and the center of the pelvis forward, and a little bit of a pinning of the arm as you turn the chest into it would give it some of the initial hand path as the left arm then starts working its way away from the right shoulder. So this angle would increase. Right. So. The initial pinning would decrease this angle. Yeah. That means the chest is kind of turning into that lead arm. Yeah. At the same time, the golfer is shifting towards the front Which foot. Which causes this to shift in. Right. Not that the golf, you know, you see the wide to narrow. When the golfer is not going wide to narrow this way, they're shifting the, the center of the body forward. That pulls this in, right? Exactly right. And the arms are coming down. Yeah. So it, it's not a valid way to think of one of those in isolation. All three of those are happening simultaneously. So quickly and close together that right. it's basically to think about so at the same time. We've heard people Leave say you up. never try to pull your arms down. We've heard great players say that's all they do is try to pull their arm down. If you don't, if you succeed in not pulling down with your arms, you, you can't play golf. You can't play golf. So there has to be a downward component, whether intentional or not, of the hand path, there has to be a shift. Yes. So this is having time to do that. And then there has to be this turn with enough space here for that to happen and not send the hands way out towards the golf ball. Absolutely right. And you know, the, the leave the hands up and there's no pull of the hands, you know, it would look like this and you would just go right. around. <laughs> that's no good. You'd make a head like a swing like this. Just standing back with your back to the target doing this, that's no, no good. good. Yeah, so, so it's, it's a, a blend. Right. It would be so easy or it'd be so cool if we could easily say, just do one of those. But the reality is they all three happen. And you have to determine in your own swing, and you're welcome to send us swings to look at, which one of those maybe are you lacking in or which one of those do you need more of? Yeah, and to tie into this, that initial hand path as well, there has to be a downward force to get the club yes. to swing on a plane. But the trick to it is to maintain your width. I think. You know, people get so afraid to, to add downward force because they narrow. Well, it's because they see this. They see yeah. the downswing hand path way inside that backswing hand path. That's because the shift is happening. Not because of a narrowing of the right arm right. angle. The best players actually start widening Increasing the right, the right arm. So arm angle. If he didn't shift, this would come down very close to the outside hand path, his backswing hand path. Because he's shifting, this thing narrows relative to where it started, yeah. but he is actually trying to add width. Absolutely. So great golfers aren't trying to be narrow on the downswing, they're trying to add width. That hides the club center of mass back behind you. Yeah. So if I tried to narrow, that sits the center of mass of the club out and you lose all that lag, you start dumping the angles. Yeah, so uh, downward force to the arms to try to add club head speed as you maintain width planes right. the club, right? You don't have to worry about that motion as long as you're not narrowing the angle of your right, right. elbow base. So to say it's a rotation thing and you'd be passive or leave the arms up, that's not correct. To say you drive the arms down and keep the back to the target, that's not correct. Mm -mm. It's a combination and or to say you hang back, don't shift forward, you rotate, that's not correct either. It's a combination of all three 
happening that produce a very on-plane, lag-looking, powerful. powerful, solid swing. You need all three. We can help you find out which one is probably lacking, or two maybe lacking from your swing, but you definitely need all three. So to answer Leo's question, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hopefully. all of those, Leo. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so if you have questions about your own swing and that hand pass on the downswing is a hot topic, right? Yeah. Send us your swing in or ask more questions. If we didn't really cover uh, the exact thing you want to hear about in this particular video, we'd love to shoot another one. We'll do it for you, no problem. If you haven't already, click on the big golf ball below to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.